One of my favorite YouTubers needs some help. exactly how long ago, but a few years ago I started following a, a YouTuber who calls himself The Carpet Bagger. I originally discovered him because I love videos about abandoned houses, abandoned places, and that's what he started out doing, or at least that's the video of his that I first found. But uh, after a while I began watching him and I realized this is a guy with a really great personality. No matter what he's talking about, he just makes you smile. So I'm like, you know what, I want to follow this. Turns out that what he was really into, more than anything else, is roadside attractions. He travels across the United States looking for unusual roadside attractions. You know, the, the odd the wax museums and collections of weird memorabilia and stuff like that. Those kinds of videos aren't really my cup of tea, but I still continue to follow him because he had this great personality and his daughter Anna, when she gets on the show, the thing just clicks. He does some awesome drone footage, gets great wide shots of the entire areas he's shooting. So basically I became a big fan, but uh, recently he got into a little bit of trouble and I felt that what happened to him just wasn't fair. I'll let him tell the story. Close to 15 years ago, you know, I became interested in photography and folk legends and roadside attractions. And, you know, I would document these. I would photograph them. I'd research them. I was, you know, obsessed with this goofy, weird stuff. You know, it turned into a hobby. I, I posted my pictures on uh, Flickr. From that, I evolved into having a photo blog. Then, you know, I moved on to video. I, I liked how others that I saw that were, you know, using the video format to, shoot, to make traveling videos, and I started doing that as a hobby. Something happens. <laughs> Over the next couple of years, uh, people start watching. A lot of people start watching and it grows into something bigger than I ever thought it would be. You know, it got to the point where sometimes people would recognize me um, around town. At some point, um, my job uh, became aware of my YouTube videos. I've worked for 10 years in social services and child protective services, and um, kind of how I, I had time to travel was I'd work long on-call shifts for seven days straight, and then I would have a block of seven days off. So that would allow me to film. So I'd film my days off, work on the on the days that I had to work. My work became aware of this. Um, you know, they kind of asked me about it. They were maybe not happy that I had gotten another job without consulting them first. I didn't consider it a job. I considered it a hobby. I considered it something I did for fun. But they considered it a job, and they asked me, you know, to, to fill out all the appropriate paperwork. Uh, to declare what I did. So I thought that was that. I thought, you know, we, we'd come to a agreement. I thought it was just a little stumble block. Um, you know, they seemed okay with me doing it. You know, they agreed that my content was not controversial, that it was not anything that would interfere with my job. Over the past year, I have been stalked and harassed um, by certain individuals on the internet. Maybe that's something that comes with the territory. At this point, I think I have 70,000 subscribers. So I guess out of 70,000 people, one or two of them is going to be a little off. Someone has decided to continuously harass me at work, uh, continuously harass my boss, uh, continuously send letters, send creepy postcards um, to my office. I had a meeting with uh, the director of my agency, and I was told that basically, in short, um, they were tired of people calling, they were tired of people um, calling about me, calling and being bothering them about me, and they said that um, my YouTube channel had become a distraction and that I wasn't allowed to have it anymore. Really cut me deep because this YouTube channel, it just seems more an extension of um, who I am personally. It's been 
an interest, a hobby of mine since before I had this job. A de- I've had this job a decade. I was, you know, doing this as a hobby before then, before that ever, before I ever employed, before I ever made one cent off of this supposed job. <laughs> um, so I was supposed to just delete my YouTube channel and pretend it never happened. I disagree strongly with uh, their logic. I think the fact that I'm being harassed and because of that, and they even said in this meeting today that they did not feel that there was anything inappropriate on my channel, that there was anything that, it, that on the channel itself that interfered with my work. The only problem they have is that um, unstable people are calling my job and making unfounded complaints. So I think that to ask me to delete my YouTube channel because I am a victim of harassment is wrong. I don't think that's right. So um, I consulted with my wife um, and I made the decision. Um, I put in my two weeks notice. I, on principle, I felt like it was wrong for them to ask me to take down my YouTube page. Um, and on a personal level, I just, to take that away from me is just not something I feel um, I could live with. I've decided that I'm going to give this a crack. I'm going to sink or swim. Um, and I don't know if this is going to work. This may, I may, this may be a big failure. This may be something I look back and regret. But as of now, um, I'm going to attempt to focus all my energy on this YouTube channel. And um, for the time being, I want this YouTube channel to be my sole source of employment. You know, if I can't make videos that can generate enough interest to keep the channel alive full time, uh, then that's what's going to happen. Um, but if I can grow this channel, then I can make it bigger. I think I can make it better. And I hope you guys are willing to stick with me on this journey. I don't understand how any workplace can ask you to take down your YouTube channel for something like this. He's a social worker. I'm sure there are people who have their gripes against him for going after them for whatever was happening to their children. But, you know, it's not like, given the kind of work he does, it's pretty safe to assume that he's not the only one being harassed, yet he's the one being picked on and, ha and being asked to take his channel down. And he's, uh, he's actually decided to walk away. He has over 70,000 subscribers now. So he has a shot, and I want to help him. Problem is, right now, I'm not in a financial position to be able to offer him any money on Patreon. If I can't afford to give money, I make a video and try to spread the word. And that's what I'm asking. All my viewers, check out The Carpetbagger. If you like his work, please subscribe to his channel and share it to more people. He wants to make this work as his regular job. He wants to make this his regular source of income. And I want to see this happen for him because he deserves it. He's worked hard. He's got a great personality. He's a great guy. I know his stuff is not to everyone's taste, but he's a lot of fun. And I swear, if you stick with him, he, there, he, there's something on his channel for everybody. All I'm asking is check his channel out. And if you like his content, subscribe and share. And if you can afford to throw him a few dollars on Patreon, that would be awesome too. But I want to see Jacob the Carpetbagger succeed in what he is trying to do. I just want him to be able to say to those people who asked him to lead his YouTube channel, this is what I love, this is what I want to do, and you can't take that away from me. Every little bit helps if you want to support this channel. I have my Patreon. If you donate $3 a month, I'll send you a postcard. I'm going to keep doing that. Um, you can think about buying a t-shirt. Think about Super Chat donations. Think about PayPal donations. You know, watching helps. Um, sharing helps. Spreading the word. Uh, just telling people. Word of mouth. Um, you know, 
I'd love if we can together uh, build this channel. So yeah, put it out there. Uh, two weeks, I will be uh, no longer be a social worker. Whew. And uh, I will give this a try. I will do it full time. I will put my blood, sweat, tears, and heart into it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you stick with me. And uh, we'll see where, where we land. Love you guys.